Welcome to DCEO's grantee training. In this presentation, we aspire to build better grant applicants by addressing the common missteps made during the grant application process. After a review of application data from 2023, the Office of Accountability with the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity uncovered the top five reasons for application denial. Based on those findings, we've developed this training to address those common problems and better equip potential grantees with the tools and resources they need for success. Based on the review of the available data, it was determined that the top five reasons for denial include not being registered in the GATA grantee portal, not obtaining pre-qualification status by the grant application deadline, not including all of the required documents in the application package, not providing adequate or enough information in the grant application, and not submitting the application package by the deadline. Applicants are denied for grants if they aren't registered in the GATA grantee portal by the time they submit their grant application package. Registration in the GATA portal is required to apply for and receive grant funds. GATA stands for Grant Accountability and Transparency Act, which is landmark legislation that increases accountability and transparency in the use of grant funds through adoption of the federal grant guidance and regulations codified at 2 CFR Part 200 or uniform requirements. The GATA portal is a centralized location used by grantees, grant managers, and other administrative staff associated with grant funding. To register in the portal, visit grants.illinois.gov portal. From there, you can select Create Account to complete your individual registration. Once you've completed your registration, you will access the GATA portal and either register your organization if they are not yet in the GATA system, or you will request access to your organization's GATA profile. Applicants are denied when they fail to obtain pre-qualified status by the time the grant application window closes. The GATA portal is where applicants can view and manage their pre-qualification status. Pre-qualification is a set of requirements defined by the state of Illinois for all organizations seeking to receive grant funding. Entities who wish to do business with the state of Illinois must meet these requirements to be deemed qualified and in good standing. Pre-qualification requires active and public registration in SAM.gov including a valid unique entity identifier, or UEI, a valid federal employer identification number, or FEIN, and a certificate of good standing from the Illinois Secretary of State. Additionally, to be pre-qualified, Applicants cannot be on the Federal Excluded Parties list, the Illinois Stop Payment list, and the Illinois DHFS Sanctions list. Please note that the Certificate of Good Standing only applies to corporations, not-for-profit corporations, limited partnerships, limited liability companies, and limited liability partnerships. When accessing the GATA portal, applicants will be able to see the status of each of these requirements and address them accordingly. In this screenshot, we can see items in red and yellow, Items in yellow are pending and subject to change based on validation. Items in red require attention. Applicants will need to address these items and bring them into good status to be deemed pre-qualified and apply for grants. Pre-qualification must be obtained by the time the grant application window closes and maintained throughout their grant life cycle. The application review process includes checking an organization's pre-qualification history in the GATA grantee portal to confirm they were in good standing by the grant application deadline. If a grantee was not pre-qualified in the GATA portal, they will not proceed in the review process. Our third common misstep involves proper documentation included in the grant application packages. Many applicants who are denied a grant failed to submit all the additional documentation outlined in the Notice of Funding Opportunity, or NOFO. Included in Part D, Section 2 of the NOFO, is a list of documents to be completed and included in the grant application. These documents can include but are not limited to program application, uniform grant application, uniform budget template, mandatory disclosure, and conflict of interest disclosure. The program application is the portion of the application package where applicants will use a narrative to best describe how their intended project meets the requirements of the grant program. These questions are program-related and is best to use as much detail as possible. And remember to refer to the application review criteria under Part E of the NOFO supplement to include and expand on your answers. The uniform grant application also needs to be completed for submission. This document details your entity information, contact details, program title, and estimated funding. The uniform budget template is a Microsoft Excel workbook to be completed based on your proposed project's financials. Please note that the budget template needs to align with the funding requests stated in your program application and uniform grant application. Also included is the mandatory disclosure and the conflict of interest disclosure. And if the grant program requires any additional forms or supporting documents those will be listed in the application document section as well. 
Once you have completed all the required application documents, it's important to make sure they are signed by your entity's authorized signatory. Please note that all application materials must be submitted by the deadline posted in the NOFO, no extensions will be granted. It should also be highlighted that not all grant opportunities will require this exact set of documents. Some programs may have additional forms or templates to be completed outside of this collection. Please be mindful when reviewing the required documents for a grant application. A common issue experienced is receiving a low score on a grant application. This happens when applicants fail to convey key details about their program. During the merit review process, applications are judged on the criteria outlined in the NOFO. Applicants should use the NOFO and the criteria specified under Part E of the NOFO as a reference when completing their grant application. For instance, a good grant application should address a need in the applicant's community and how their program will make an impact. Applicants should be able to provide examples of similar successful programs or projects. While demonstrating their passion for their project, applicants should be cognizant of their use of jargon, acronyms, or terms that reviewers may not be familiar with. Provide explanations and definitions and assume that reviewers know absolutely nothing about your project, so be sure to fill them in on the important details. Finally, applicants are encouraged to back up their grant proposals by citing sources, providing statistics, facts, and studies that support the application. Our final common misstep is missing the application deadline. The notice of funding opportunity clearly states when the application window closes. This includes the exact date and time that applications are due and where applications are to be submitted. Applications are timestamped upon submission and those that fall outside of the window will not advance through the merit review process. Do not wait until the last minute to start your application. Prepare your application well in advance of the application deadline. Use the link provided under Part D of the NOFO to submit your application and required materials. Do not submit your application required documents via email. These will not be accepted and will result in wasted time. If not submitted in the required manner, your application will not be accepted. Finally, if you have questions, contact the program manager identified in Part D, Section 1 of the NOFO. An important tip for success is thoroughly reviewing the Notice of Funding Opportunity, or NOFO. Grantees can save time and frustration by fully examining the eligibility requirements of the NOFO. This will help you determine if this program is right for you or if you are an eligible candidate. The NOFO will address when they can expect to receive their grant funds and whether that will be through reimbursements. Grantees should be prepared to cover costs in the event that cost sharing and matching is required. Share the NOFO with your team to ensure understanding. Use the NOFO as a checklist while completing your application. Address each section of Part E, Application Review Information, and remember to proofread your work before submitting. We invite you to attend trainings and office hours provided by the DCEO Office of Accountability. You're welcome to come learn from the experts and explore available resources. If a grant opportunity offers a technical assistance session, we encourage you to attend or view the recording if you missed the presentation. These sessions are highly informative and answer questions from potential applicants. Remember, your questions are welcome. Take advantage of the DCEO Grantee Resources page. Here you can find information on upcoming trainings, how to contact the help desk, grant opportunities, and the video tutorials and resources page. This collection contains short videos that cover different grant-related topics. Review our entire library by visiting dceo.illinois.gov slash dceo-grants. If you have questions about the grant opportunity and the application, you can contact the program manager identified in the NOFO. If you have questions about where to find grant opportunities, pre-qualification, how to register in the GATA portal or other items, contact the DCEO Grant Help Desk at ceo.granthelp@illinois.gov. Thank you for watching this presentation. For additional resources, please visit DCEO's Grantee Resource page by scanning the QR code with your mobile device or visit dceo.illinois.gov/dceo-grants.